Well, welcome and thanks for joining me again uh, in this series of discussions that I'm having with various uh, representatives of different sectors across North Wales discussing how coronavirus and COVID-19 has impacted on their work uh, and the work of their colleagues. Uh, and joining me uh, this time is Di Edwards, who's a regional officer with the Education Union, NEU Cymru. Uh, he works in Flintshire. Thank you for joining us, Di. Um, no problem. Now, of course, hot off the press, we've had the announcement from the Welsh Government uh, and the Minister about a proposed return to school on the 29th of July. Uh, no, June. June. I've, I've given June. you an extra month yeah. to get ready there. <laughs> uh, so in three and a half weeks' time, which is you know, mm. relatively short notice, so we'll come on to those challenges in a moment. Uh, but before maybe going into that kind of detail, can you just give us a broad sort of uh, outline of what the Union's response has been to, to this announcement? Yes, um, of course. The it, it, I think uh, it's fair to say here that the, the, the announcement came as a little bit of a shock to people today. Um, I don't think we were expecting that. I think we were more sort of geared up for a, maybe a, sub a September start. Uh, and our um, secretary for the NEU, NEU company, David Evans, um, gave out the statement pretty much straight afterwards. Um, and, and if I could just read a, a very short passage here, it says the minister's statement in which he has opened schools to all new groups with effect from the 29th of June does not sit well with NU Cymru. It is too much too soon and while splitting new groups into cohorts with staggered starts, lessons and break, breaks may mean that at most a third of pupils may be present at any one time. In the larger secondary schools that will mean hundreds of pupils on site with all other logistical difficulties that they present. Especially to admire a lot, uh, sorry, there's a lot of questions um, that people need to answer. Um, I think, you know, it, it, as you can imagine, it's been like, I know it's been like GCHQ <laughs> in my house this afternoon, as you can appreciate, and I'm sure you've been the same for you. Yeah. But, you know, and I think and a number of the concerns are valid as well. You know, the union, um, I won't say we were blindsided by it, but I don't think we expected it to be this soon. You know, as you mentioned in your, in your introduction there, we've got three and a half weeks now to get everything ready. Some of the documentation, I believe, is being published in the middle of next week. So, again, you know, that gives us another fortnight then to look at the Welsh Government guidance. Um, I, I, I think they would, you know, we would have preferred, to, you know, if you're going to make an announcement, then I think there's a valid reason to actually uh, publish this, these documents now so that it gives us as much time as we possibly can. So, yes, there's an awful lot to, to go through before we go back. So clearly then you were surprised that the announcement today r referred or related to all schools and all pupils, all yes. in a staggered yeah. way. Whereas I think the expectation previously maybe was that they'd start with maybe year six in primary schools, year 10 and 12 in secondary schools. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so as you said, you, you were taken aback a little bit by, by the sort of uh, the magnitude of, of the intent. Yeah, I think so. And from a union point of view, um, you know, and I, I, I've spoken to you before, uh, we've been in, in 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 regular dialogue with the Welsh government, with with Kirsty Williams and the and the Education Office, um, you know, and we've had really constructive talks, um, you know, and I just think today was a bit of a left field announcement in the sense that you know I I, I think all of a sudden the what were what was racing through people's heads was the fact that hang on we got an awful lot to sort out then within that three and a half weeks i think it's the time frame that has spooked people a little bit if i'm honest um you know and thinking of from a health and safety point of view you've got to make sure that everything is in place and we have the resources available also to make sure that everything's in place that we can make the site as safe as we possibly can and i think that's expedited that now um you know and obviously then there's logistics of social distancing within within the school um, and every school is different, you know, we, and, and faces its own challenges. And we were also a little bit concerned as well that we, you know, as a union, that there's an awful lot of pressure being put on head teachers at the minute and senior leaders. You know, it's a it's a it's a huge responsibility, you know, to to sign that off if you like to make to say that schools are safe. Um, so yes, a number of questions have been thrown up, certainly. And the younger the children are, the more difficult things like social distancing are going to be. Well, you know, I, I you know, my, I, I, I mentioned you before, my children are grown up now, but, you know, I, it's impossible how you, how you're basically going to get small children to understand social distancing and understand uh, what, what two meters, <laughs> you know, how to say two meters apart is very difficult. And because obviously they wouldn't have seen their friends for a very long time now, you know, you know, they'll want to interact and play and so on, which is natural, you know, it's going to be that's going to be a logistical headache, I think, and a number of, of head teachers, I'm sure, will be scratching their heads tonight, thinking, "How on earth are we going to implement all of this?" 
The minister did say, of course, that she wouldn't be looking to penalise any parents who chose not to send their children back to school uh, for these next few weeks that are proposed before uh, the summer holiday. We're also looking potentially at some children ne needing to be kept away from school because they're in the shielding uh, category, as well as maybe yeah. some of the parents themselves who have health issues, not wishing their children to risk bringing anything home. So yeah. we're not likely to see a full complement that anyway, are we? I mean, where do you think... You know, where, where do you think public opinion is on this? Are we likely to see uh, a minimal amount of children returning or, or do you think it's... It, it'll be interesting. Um, I, I, um, it's still early days yet. I think once the dust has settled tonight um, and, you know, people are sort of absorbing this information, I think from tomorrow onwards we'll see where public opinion lies. It could be split. It could be, you know, that some people want, obviously, you know, or... or children are, they you know they, they want their children to come back but they might be as you say there'll be a number i'm sure that will think hang on is it still you know we'll still be very nervous about sending their children back to school and i think like you say i, I whether we get back to that even if, what I, this might not make sense a full third capacity is is doubtful even though we may have the capacity to do that the amount of children that will actually be there on our doorstep when we when we turn up on the 29th of june i don't know you know, I, I think, as you say, it's open to question. And the minister said, of course, we'd get now four weeks in before the summer holiday, given that she's adding another week to the end of term. Mm. And then that week then is taken as an additional half term week, sort of fortnight yeah. for half term in, in October. Yeah. Um, but um, the question I was, I was going to ask was, the, the minister suggests that summer will provide some sort of natural fire break. So after this yeah. initial four weeks, we can sort of then take stock over the summer so that way we can learn the lessons and maybe implement things differently in, in September. Is that an approach that you welcome, albeit challenging, but at least it gives an opportunity to just put our toes in the water a little bit? I, I can sort of see the logic in that a little bit. However, um, because I think the, the, the thing that worries us the most as a union, and I'm sure a number of people out there, is if, if you know, it, it's a bit of a gamble, I think, to say we're going to learn lessons from this because we've got such a limited amount of time to get everything ready. And I think, you know, it is an issue. And, you know, yes, of course, I think giving us until September would have given us our extra time anyway to, to, to make sure to check, check and double check that we've got our standards in place and to sign off the, the fact that, yes, we are satisfied that as to our the, the very best of our ability, everything is in place that we need. I think it's the, the time scale is, is the real concern. And can, you know, and, and again, from the union standpoint, can we afford... <sighs> I know it's easy to say you learn from your mistakes, but you know if, if we can minimise the mistakes by 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 not coming back at that point and saying we are going to start in September. During so between now and September, we have the opportunity to make sure that the schools are ready for when people come back. Because you know the last thing we want to do now is to rush this process, thereby putting you know a, a number of people at risk. Yes, because making those mistakes would have quite serious consequences. It, absolutely, you know, and and you know who needs. And again, I go back to the fact that I think is a huge level of responsibility on head teachers, on senior leaders. They didn't sign up for that, you know, initially. And and I know this is a very unforeseen circumstance. I get that, but it's still an awful lot of pressure. I think to put on our leaders, you know. Yeah, and there's a clear message there. I, I have to say, uh, obviously, if it's a third of the pupils at a time, then presumably pupils will be there a third of their usual school week if 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 that much um yeah. the question that comes from that is that the minister suggested that they would be going back to school to check in and to catch up with the terms that yeah. she used, which doesn't suggest that it's going to be back to teaching in school as it was certainly so I mean, what's your interpretation of what she means by that well we're, uh, we're not 100 percent sure if, if we're honest i think again the, the devil will be in the detail when that when that starts to emerge over the next couple of days and we'll have to have a look at that i do think though that and, and a number of my colleagues agree with me here that there is going to be a very important pastoral role that we are going to have to play um, when we come back um for both students and staff alike you know because we all have very individual circumstances with this and some people will be will obviously by dint of the fact be coping better than others mm -hmm. so i think we've got to be very watchful of this when we go back for that couple of weeks in the summer um to make sure that we structure a day or we structure our our lessons and give people a chance to breathe if you th if you like from a mental health point of view from a physical health point of view and to make sure that everybody's okay you know whether the, you know and i think the emphasis you know i think as a union we'd be pushing for the emphasis to be on well-being and i think maybe maybe that's what the minister meant there but i think there are more details to come out between now and the end of the week and again 
as a union, we'll we'll take a good look at that and and and, and, and answer appropriately. Yeah, that's a very important point because I I mean I have four children and uh, to think if they if they weren't back in school until September, then it's not far off six months, is it? No, and indeed. that's a long, long time to be sort of at a distance from yeah, the education yeah. system, your friends, and and yes, that you can sort of confide in if there are issues, of course, at home or something that you need to be yeah you know, uh, sharing. We with are, you. we are, mind. I have to say, in fairness to a, a number of schools, and 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 the vast majority of schools have been ever so good in trying to make sure that the most the most vulnerable and looked after children are being contacted regularly, um, and to to provide you know any any help and assistance that we can. And that, you know, I know of schools that have, have given out uh, laptops, et cetera, you know, so that people have access to home learning, you know, because that was another issue that cropped up as well. How many, obviously, a number of these lessons will, even when we do go back um, to a third of capacity, a number of these lessons are going to have to be done via, um, you know, uh, education platforms, Google Classroom, et cetera, you know. So we need to make sure as many children as possible have access to that, you know. And much of the potential uh, success of the proposed four weeks before the summer now, of course, would depend as well on the test, trace and protect system. Yes. I mean, unless that's effective, then clearly yeah. we're not going anywhere in terms of schools, are we? Well, again, I think that's another big question that needs to be answered and we, we will see clarity on that because, you know, um, in England at the moment, there's, there doesn't seem to be an awful lot of data coming back from what I can gather looking at the national news, the UK news. There doesn't seem to be an awful lot of data. So, you know, is that going to be up and running for us when we get back at the end of June? As I say, the time scale isn't, isn't very much at all, um, you know, and, and for an awful lot to happen, I think, you know, uh, as far as making sure that we, we, we're going to be working around the clock, I think, you know, to try and ensure that we, we, we are satisfied that we've got things in place ready to go for the 29th of June. And are there lessons that we can learn from England, given that they're back before us? Well, I think it was it was interesting. Um, you know, it, in in one sense, I suppose is is has been a bit of an advantage to us here to see what's happened over the board of the last week. But it was noticeable as well in a number of areas. You take Liverpool, who's just across the water from us here in in North Wales, um, that they were they weren't very happy about sending their children back to schools, especially those who are under local government control, um, and the numbers weren't as high. I don't think as as the government might have predicted, you know, uh, 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 the amount of children going back. Um, and I, I, I still, you know, look, re uh, reading things from colleagues in England, you know, they're still very concerned about about the a number of children going back. And, and parents were concerned also about sending their children back. So it'll be very interesting, I think, over the next couple of days to see what the reaction of the Welsh public is now to, to what's been said today. Indeed, and maybe some of them might comment when we put uh, this video up on uh, social media. So, Di, thank there you so much for joining us, and best no wishes. Problem. We appreciate the work you do, and we know it's going to be quite a challenge to get things moving by the 29th. Thank you. Thank you.